Our next topic is lines. Now, by lines here we mean, you know, lines in in three dimensions, right? Because we we already know lines pretty well when we're talking about lines in in the plane. We know how that works, right? Um, you know, lots of ways to think about defining a line, right? Um, slope intercept, um, point slope. There's a, two points, right? So we know that in the in the plane, I mean, one way to think about defining a line is you two points in the plane, right? Say P and Q. And you can connect the dots and you get a line. All right. Imagine that's straight. And we'll try to straighten this part out. A little bit better. There we go. Okay. So there's our line. And we, we know how to get the equation, right, of a line in the plane. And one of the ways we do that is we get the slope, right? And so we can say, well, here's delta x. Here's delta y. And how do we get those? Well, if we know the coordinates of our two points, if, say, this is the point x1, y1, and this is the point x2, y2, right? Then this is going to be x2 minus x1. This is going to be y2 minus y1. And so the slope, delta y over, over delta x, we know how to get that. And we need a point on the line. We can take any point on the line. We could take, for example, the point P, right? And we know that one way to write down the equation of a line, just like when we're doing, say, a tangent line, is the y value is equal to the initial point, y1 on the line, plus the slope, right? There we are, times x minus x1, right? There we go. Equation of a line. Now, looks a little bit nicer once you plug the numbers in, but that's that's pretty much the, the whole story there, right? Um, or, or if you want, I mean, there, there's a sort of slightly more symmetric way of doing this. You can also think about, you know, move the y1 over and multiply by the delta x. I don't know. I don't know if this is any more useful. do it that way too. But um, the, I guess the main thing, you know, that, that works here, and, and we can also, I mean, there's lots of, you could also put this over here and that over there. I mean, the defining property of a line is that this ratio, this slope, the delta y over the delta x, right, it's the same for any, any two points on the line. So if I had chosen a point here and a point there and I did the delta y over the delta x, I'm going to get the same thing, right? And, and that's maybe what you know, one way to think about that is if I, if I actually bring this, you know, over here. Um, so if I divided by that rather than cross multiplying, that gives you another way of seeing it, right? That the, the ratio is the same. The delta y over the delta x, the ratio is the same. Okay. Um, the trouble with, with extending this to, to three dimensions is slope is, is inherently a relationship between a pair of variables, right? Delta y over delta x. But we have three variables once we move into space. And giving a relationship between any two of those three variables, well, that's not going to cut it. So how do we describe a line? Well, there are a few ways to think about it. One way is to say, well, you can still talk about like a line passing through a pair of points, right? P, Q. And, and think about, you know, this... Uh, you know, the, the x and the y. What are the x and the y in the, in the original equation of a line? Well, that's just some other point, maybe, right? x, y on the line, right? And, and so, yeah, one way to think about this is if I, if I use, say, r and p to calculate my slope, um, I would get this over that, delta y over delta x. If I use q and p, I get the slope here delta y over delta x, and I get the same result. Um, now, I can draw the line through those points, like so. 
And we want to think about how do we describe that line. Well, we're in three-dimensional space now, and we don't use slopes to describe directions in space, right? What do we use to describe direction? Well, we're in the chapter on vectors. We use a vector. So the, what we want to do is, is construct a vector, and there's kind of a natural one here. We can take this vector, v. So v is going to be the vector from p to q. So if p is, let's say, x1, y1, z1, q is x2, y2, z2, All right? So then v is going to be this vector, x2 minus x1, y2 minus y1, z2 minus Z1, right? And notice that it's this vector, it does contain a lot of this sort of similar information to what we have over here in the two-dimensional scenario, right? We have we have our delta x, we have our delta y, we have our delta z. We have all those in place. All right. So where do we go from there? Well, the next step is is wanting to describe some other point on the line. So let's think about it. Here's some other point. R, X, Y, Z. And, and I want to specify that that point is on the line. It's on the same line as the points P and Q. How are we going to do it? Well, one way to do about it is to say this. If R is on the line, well, that means, you know, we want, we want to generalize this idea, you know, over here we say, well, you know, the, the slope calculating using P and Q, that delta Y over the delta X, is the same as the slope we get doing delta Y over delta X using P and R. Um, we can do the same kind of thing here. Saying that R is on the line, well, what that really means is that the vector from P to Q should be in the same direction as the vector from P to R. That's, that's the analog of slope here. Same slope, same direction. Um, so PQ should be parallel to the vector PR, right? So in other words, what that means is that PQ, well, let's say PR, let's do it this way. So PR has to be some scalar multiple of PQ. Right, so this is some, now we call this a parameter, but for now just think of it as a scalar multiple, okay? So what does that, what does that look like when we translate? Well, um, PR looks like X minus X1, Y minus Y1, Z minus Z1, and PQ is our V, we have it up here, right? And let me just write it as V. Just to be simple, let's write it as V. T times V, just to save some writing. And what I'm also going to do is I'm going to take this vector, I'm going to split this up, right, using just sort of our, our rules for vector algebra. X, Y, Z minus X1, Y1, Z1 is equal to T times V. Ah, now we're getting actually quite a bit closer to the sort of the vector equation for the line. Um, and, and in fact, one of the things we should do, and maybe I'll, let me do it, let me do it. Um, let's call this x naught, y naught, and z naught rather than one. Leave that as two, it doesn't matter. So zero, 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 we'll do it here. And, and you'll see why. I'm making that change in a second. It'll, it's just a matter of convenience, but we'll do it that way. Okay, so, so this here, um, well, that's also a vector. And what does it represent? It represents that point P. I'm going to give it an, I'm going to call it P, well, I'll call it P naught, right? It's that sort of initial point. Um, and so what we get is this sort of equation. X, Y, Z is equal to uh, this initial point P naught plus t times v. 
where we can put in what that information is. Okay. Uh, this, this here, we could always maybe call this P if we want. We could write it like that. That works too. Okay. Um, that, that's an equation for a line now in three dimensions. That does the job. Uh, and let's say a little, what's going on with this. Okay. We can actually, we can actually say a little bit more about it. Um, let's choose this color. So P naught is actually, if we draw, think about drawing vectors with tails at the origin. There's that vector P naught pointing there to the initial point P. And this vector here, I'll just kind of go through that. There's this vector, we'll call that um, P. Or, or sometimes we call it R, why not? We'll call it R for the point R. Um, you'll see that's actually probably more common notation, actually, somehow. R tends to be more common. You might call that R naught. Um, and so what are, we, what are we really saying? We're saying, well, R is P naught plus T times V. And, you know, remember when we first talked about vectors, we talked about vectors in the context of, like, giving directions. Well, this makes perfect sense because we imagine everyone starts at the origin. The origin's our starting point. So what are we really saying here? We're saying start at the origin. Um, first, follow the directions in this vector to get to this point. Now you're on the line. So first we tell you how to get on the line. We have some particular point on the line that's our reference point. It's this point. I don't know why, but that's the point. Okay? So we get on the line. The vector v tells you the direction that you have to move in to stay on the line. Okay? So moving in the direction of v lets us stay on the line. We're on the line. Now we're going to stay on the line. Um, and then to get to a particular point on the line, we need to know how far to go in that direction. That's where this number t comes in, right? It says how much do we have to stretch or shrink or possibly reverse this vector to get to the point we want to go to, right? So we have to stretch it out a little bit to get to that point r. And there we go. That's our equation for a line in three dimensions. Um, there are a number of other ways that you will see this uh, written out. If you kind of put everything in, in component form, you'll often see this written as like, you know, x is equal to say x naught plus t times, well, I guess x2 minus x naught, the way we've written it here. But typically that'll just be some number, right? y is y naught plus t times, sorry, y2. Minus y naught, z is z naught plus t times Z2 minus Z0, right? And, and notice that each of those, those equations there, right, these are kind of linear equations. They look very much like the equation of a line that you, you see in two dimensions. Uh, there are also, there's another form called the symmetric form. These, these are called the parametric equations of a line. There's another one called symmetric form where you try to eliminate the parameter T that's a little bit more analogous to this. Shows up now and then. Not something that I tend to use when I'm doing this course, but some people do like those symmetric equations for some reason. Okay? All right. Uh, that's the basics. We'll explore this a little bit further with a few examples coming right up.